Hi everyone, welcome to Mobility Day. So we're splitting this day into two parts. Part A is for stretching and mobility, and part B is for core work. So our mobility section now starts with what we call a pepper grinder. So you should push your chest front, left, back and right as much as possible and then connect the dots by creating a clockwise rotation through your chest like so. When you're done with 10 reps on one side or in one direction, repeat in the other direction for 10 reps. As you can see, you should try to extend your chest in all directions as much as possible and connect the dots making it smooth. You should feel your spine and your chest experiencing a very nice stretch here. Your bottom body, lower body should not be moving. We've done this before last time but seated. So let's do it a bit differently this time, standing up. This would also actually help warm up your hips and increase the mobility there slowly. Next mobility exercise is cat-cow. It's extremely yoga inspired, but it's so good for your lower back. So what you want to do is get into tabletop position with the neutral spine and then arch and flex your back like so, breathing in when you arch, breathing out when you flex. The extension of the spine, it should be as long as possible. And now protect your wrists by pushing up through your fingertips, your knuckles, and push up through your back. So you should be, there should be a force pushing through so you don't put any weight in your wrists. Make sure you are aligned. Be aware of your knees and your ankles aligning. From here, we go into a standing pose or posture, neutral spine, and we come back down into a forward bend. We're going to do dynamic ragdoll. So grab your elbows and slowly swivel from left to right. 10 reps per side. If you're short on time, five reps will do. This will feel really great as it will open up and loosen your lower back, especially if you sit very often. If you want more control, you can use your fingertips to push you left, right, breathing in, breathing out as you come through, breathing in, breathing out as you come through, feeling such a nice stretch in your hammies. From here, we will then transition into inchworms. So from the top of your mat, we do a forward fold and use your palms to step out into a plank. Now step back palm by palm into standing pose and then back into plank. Breathe in as you come up and breathe out as you get into your plank position. Breathing in, breathing out, the whole time engaging your core. So you should feel, um, you feel your core warming up and your entire body activating, including your arms, through your shoulders, and feeling again a nice stretch through the whole back of your legs and your spine. So we're, we're really warming up the body and increasing the range of movement in every joint possible. So good for the front and back of your body. As you get into planks, always make sure that your spine is as straight as possible, pushing up again and not putting your weight in your wrists. It's almost like you're doing a standing pose but horizontal when you do a plank. From here, we transition into a deep squat. Squats and practicing dynamic squats are so good for opening up the range of movement in your hip joints. So rock left to right, you immediately start feeling uh, your hip joints opening up and your muscles loosening. Your range of motion here can be limited if you're not feeling flexible and if you're still cold. But if you feel warm, go ahead and increase the rocking motion. We then go into 
a rocking or dynamic version of squats. So we want to put our legs down into 45-45 degree angles. This is a second variation because you need more range of motion through your hip joints when you perform this. So come down to the right. Through your deep squat, come down to the left using both arms, fingertips to support you as you come up into your squat and then back down into the 45-45. Now, from here, we're stretching our inner thigh muscles, inner groin. So what you can see is I'm keeping my chest up as I'm going to a one-sided side squat or side lunge. So again, you can keep your heels up if you don't feel flexible enough. Important thing here is feeling a nice, pleasant stretch in your inner groin. Please don't overdo it. You can stay lifted and your heels can stay lifted. Chest should try to push up and shine up as much as possible. If you are flexible and in control, you should be able to not use your hands. From here, we move into front or single leg lunges with a twist. So some people call this the world's best stretch. I'm not sure where the name came in, but it's so good to do it before and after every workout because you're opening not only your chest, but also your lower back. So come into a right side single leg lunge, keeping your knee up or it can remain down your back knee. Now. Raise your hand up to the sky as so, like as if you're opening a door, a swing door. Feeling a nice expansion in your chest and a nice twist in your lower back. Keep your spine straight from your heel all the way to the top of your head. From here, go back into neutral position. And from here, plank into the other side, lunge. So swing your left leg to the front. You can bring your knee up, keep your chest lifted as much as possible and open the door, raising your left hand to the sky. Look up if you can. The idea is to keep a straight line from the back of your heel to the top of your head. Again, feeling a nice stretch and always through mobility, you need to breathe in and out. Breathing out whenever your muscles are lengthened. Feel a nice, warm stretch in your lower back and your chest. From here, we're going into scorpions. So get into tabletop position. From tabletop, push up into a downward dog where your heels are pressed into the ground. Three-legged dog by raising your right leg up using your inner th thighs to pull it up and then swivel back your heel should touch try to touch your glutes now here when you're ever you're doing scorpions it's very important to push evenly through your left and right palms so try not to lean to the left so equal weight distribution keep your core tight and what I'm doing here is after my scorpion, I actually push my knee in to create slight core activation. After you're done with five reps, shake it out, come back into tabletop and then downward dog for the other side, five repetitions of scorpions. So raise your left leg up using your inner thigh muscles. And now, swing your leg slowly to the left trying to touch your left heel to your glute then to finish off the movement pull your knee into your center chest arching your back and squeezing your abs when doing so breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out when you're done Gently let your knees rest onto the mat. Child's pose for three breaths to rest. Good job. Now, last mobility exercise. This is the end of part one. We're going to do lizards. And we're keeping it dynamic and low to the ground. 
Find what feels good and don't overdo things. If you feel pain, immediately stop or come back to a neutral position. So in your lunge position, push your left leg to the outer edge of the mat. Your arms and palms should be closer together. Now seesaw left to right, feeling a nice opening in your hip joints. Now, left leg comes back to center and back to plank. From here, switch sides, lizards on the right. So right leg comes up to center, push it to the outer side of the mat. Palms closer together. You can lift your knee, let it rest on the ground if you need to. Seesaw front to back. Again, a nice opening through your hip joints. This should feel really good. After you're done, Child's pose to rest and get ready for part two. Good job, everyone. After three deep breaths, we'll start with the first exercise. We're going to do rolling plank eight repetitions. How to start is again a nice stable tabletop. Push into downward dog. You can warm up a bit by pushing your heels left and right. When you're ready, roll into plank from downward dog. So these are what we call rolling planks and they help develop shoulder muscles, strong back and core, and even help stretch out your lower legs, which are often the very tight areas of your body. So these are so great for developing strength throughout your body. Again, keep your abs and core extra tight. We don't want any slacking in the lower back. We want to protect it. So eight repetitions here. Once you're done, move into three-legged dog two side knee planks. So three-legged dog, right knee to right elbow. From three-legged dog, make a rainbow and push your right knee to your right elbow five times. Repeat on the other side. So left leg comes up to the three-legged dog and rainbow your knee, left knee to your left elbow. Keep your abs tight, look forward and push evenly through your palms four repetitions per side. Rest in child's pose and get ready for the third core exercise. We're going to do step ups with warrior and lunge. From a downward dog position, step up into a lunge with your right leg by your right thumb. Come up using your core, hands up into warrior, back into plank. Repeat on the other side immediately. Left leg to lunge, high lunge, warrior, one, and then leg back into plank. Now repeat this four times per side. If you're feeling strong, you can do eight reps or even 10. I challenge you. Here I'm only doing four, so free feel free to pause the video and do a little bit more. Now we want to push ourselves, but because this is active rest day, I encourage you guys to breathe through the motion and doing less might be better because you really feel the range of motion in every mood. You feel the quality, you engage your abs and your whole body is working through every movement. So again, remember deep breaths through every move in and out even when you're resting like so in Downward Dog. Congratulations, you're at now the last exercise, which I think is the most challenging because of the amount of control you need. So from a Downward Dog, we roll into Upward Dog and reverse roll into Downward Dog again. So Downward Dog, Upward Dog, and then Downward Dog. So from Downward Dog, you do a push tricep push up into Upward Dog, and then almost a shoulder press into downward dog again. So this five repetitions. When you're done, it's gonna be tiring guys. You should feel sweat dripping.
come into child's pose and take five to ten deep breaths. You should feel the expansion in not only your belly, but your lower back. Sweep your arms back and just let your forehead rest on your mat. You can rock back and forth slightly. I like to do so just to feel a nice opening and encourage relaxation through my entire body. Thanks guys, good job.